everybody and welcome back to another episode of Women of Ancient History, a series on my channel where I create short historical profiles summarising the lives of women who lived throughout ancient history who I believe deserve to be remembered more than they are. Last episode was all about Sappho and the misconceptions and historical biases that perpetuate our understanding of her and trying to dismantle some of those views. If you want to watch that episode and more then you can check out the playlist above. Today we are talking about an empress of China who was responsible for the discovery of silk, a discovery so important that it raised her to the status of a goddess within Chinese mythology. That woman was Lei Su. I'm also not particularly sure if I'm pronouncing any of this correctly, I may be saying her name wrong. Please correct me if you know the correct pronunciation, but pronunciation guides aren't great when it comes to this. Lei Su was also known as Zhi Ling Shi, and she's believed to be born in the Lei Su village in Yanting country in the Sichuan province. She became the wife of the Yellow Emperor, or Huang Di, who is a significant feature within Chinese history and mythology. He is responsible for the creation of weapons, armor, writing, and the famous book The Yellow Emperor, the Classic of Medicines, among many other feats. The pair had two children together. Lei Sa would have been very young when they married, and despite being the wife of the emperor, she was still a woman in ancient China, so very minimal power and influence. However, according to the legends, her discovery is one that would result in her being worshipped even in modern society. There are some variations to this legend, but the most common one is this. Lei Sa was outside in her garden drinking tea, when a cocoon from a mulberry tree fell into her drink. She was annoyed at first, understandably because her tea was ruined, but when she began to pull at the cocoon out of the tea, the warmth began to unravel it. She unraveled it with her fingers and noticed how strong and durable and long these threads were. In one version of the legend, it describes that she unraveled it until the silk it covered the entirety of the garden. And thus, the discovery of silk was made. Lisa asked the Yellow Emperor to plant more of the mulberry trees in the garden, to which he obliged. She began to figure out how these strands could be utilised. She instructed the women of the court to begin to reel the silk, but this became difficult as the threads constantly became tangled. She solved this problem through the creation of a wooden spinning wheel, which prevented the strands from becoming entangled. And the women soon learned how to weave these strands into cloth. The women began to make these beautiful silk cloths, and thus the process of sericulture, cultivating silkworms, was born. And it was all due to Lei Zhu. Sericulture was such an important part of ancient China. Silk was worn by the wealthy, it was very elite, and it was a large part of China's economy, as they kept the production methods of silk a secret. They owned the monopoly on silk production, and they kept this secret for 2,000 years. The famous Silk Road was the road taken to trade silk between China and Rome. China's hold on silk and its production was broken by a Chinese princess in roughly 400 CE. The princess was to be married to a prince in India, and she wanted silk to be easily available in her new homeland. And so she smuggled mulberry seeds and silkworm eggs into her headdress. And it wasn't long after that silk production began to sprout in other countries. Silk was so important to ancient China that Lei Sao became the goddess of silk making, known as the Lady of the Silk or Silkworm Mother. She died while on an inspection trip with the Yellow Emperor, and so he also gave her tribute as a road goddess. Every lunar 15th of March, a festivity is held to celebrate her birthday. She's worshipped at her temple in Hubei province, showing how her celebration of her life continues into the modern world today. Beyond legend, we really don't know much about Lei Su. But what we do know is pretty cool, she is responsible for a giant part of the economy in China and made the discovery and created the tools to make it all happen. The Silk Road, China's wealth in the economy is partly thanks to her and that's worth remembering. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode all about Lei Su, and I really hope that you do enjoy. This episode turned out to be quite a bit shorter than a lot of the others but really I did want to talk about her but there's not too much to talk about beyond the legend of how she discovered silk. But I still think it's a really cool story to know and to celebrate bits of Chinese history. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like to help support the channel. And if you want to see more content from me, you can subscribe for future videos, including more Women of Ancient History videos. Or you can stick around to the end screen to have some of my older content recommended to you. And that's all from me. Thank you once again for watching. Bye!